Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. As the result of a Russian missile attack on a railway station in Kramatorsk in eastern Ukraine, 50 people were killed and over 300 injured. Among the victims are also former Donbass residents who are awaiting evacuation at a stall at the railway station. Today, the opening of 10 humanitarian corridors is planned to allow civilians from the most besieged districts by the Russians to safely leave their cities. This is what the railway station in Kramatorsk looked like yesterday, mostly women and children waiting to be evacuated. This morning, two Tochka missiles were fired in its direction, yet another example of the ruthlessness of the Russian military. People in need of medical assistance were taken to hospitals in the region, and we are also receiving help from hospitals in nearby regions. The demolition of towns in the Kiev region, recaptured by Ukrainian forces, continues all the time. Work has begun on the decrushing of Borodyanka. It is much more terrible there than we thought. Many more victims. And what will happen when the wind knows the whole truth about what the Russian army did in Mariupol? On every street, there is what the wind saw in Bucha and other cities in the Kiev region after the Russian troops withdrew. The same examples of cruelty and terrible crimes. More mass graves are being discovered in Bucha. One is located near St. Andrew's Church. The burials were organized by the local authorities. They are doctors, morgue workers. The graves were built during the Russian occupation. Before that, the bodies laid in the streets and were eaten by dogs. The Russians turned a blind eye to the burying of bodies by local residents. The nose of the village of Yahidne, near Chernihy, was locked in a cellar by Russian followers, with about 130 inhabitants. For a month at least, 12 people died. People were crowded together, including children. They lived next to dead bodies. Russian soldiers or the fighting outside prevented their removal. Similar situations are also taking place in other villages. In the morning, they herded us into the school cellar, by force, holding us at gunpoint. Compared to all the houses, the cellar is big, as it used to be a sports hall. It was very difficult to breathe, especially in this large room. There were no windows. People were suffocating. It was very hard. We were there from the 5th to the 30th of March. The names of the people who died are written on the basement walls. These three, two grandfathers and a woman, we managed to bury, and the man and the boy were laid next to them, but we didn't manage to bury them because the shelling started. We just barely covered their bodies with earth. Ukraine is continually taking steps to evacuate civilians from towns shelled by Russian forces. Some 4,700 people managed to leave yesterday, including from the Zaporizhia region. This includes more than 1,200 who left the city of Mariupol. According to Mariupol authorities, 160,000 people may be in dramatic humanitarian conditions in the southeast of the country. Residents cannot keep up with burying the bodies in the city, where fighting is still going on. Bucha is, Bucha massacre is just the tip of the iceberg. Mari, we already see from reports from Mariupol that Mariupol is much, much worse on all accounts. The regrouping of Russian forces to the Kursk and Belogrod regions on the Russian-Ukrainian border is underway. It has been reported that the Sumu region has been completely liberated, and the Ukrainian command is talking about winning the first phase of the war. Fighting is taking place in the eastern and southern oblasts, in cities such as Izium, Severodonetsk, Popasna, Mariupol, and in Nikopol. The target of the new Russian offensive may be the Donbass. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces has given an estimate of the aggressor's losses, including approximately 19,000 soldiers, 700 tanks and over 300 artillery systems. The parliament adopted the so-called Sanctions Act, which provides introducing an embargo on the import of coal from Russia, as well as the possibility of freezing the assets of entities and persons supporting Russia's aggression towards Ukraine. Today, the fifth package of EU restrictions on Russia has been finalized, which include oligarchs and the maritime sector. In response to Russia's aggression against Ukraine, diplomatic works are in overdrive. President Andrzej Duda and Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki met Moldova's Prime Minister Natalia Gavrilita. The topic of the accession of the country to the European Union and its financial situation has been discussed. We appeal to the member states to admit Moldova, Ukraine and Georgia to the EU. We follow the European model. We look 
to this European model with great hope. I hope that Moldova too will one day be a full member of the EU. Just yesterday, the parliament passed the so-called sanctions law, which will enable the freezing of assets of individuals and entities supporting Russia. The law on special solutions to prevent support for aggression against Ukraine and to protect national security also provides for a ban on the use and promotion of symbols supporting Russia's military activities. Our job is to return to peace, but our job is also to return to justice. Poland calls to set up the International Commission to investigate Russian atrocities committed in Ukraine. In turn, the ambassadors of the European Union member states agreed on the imposition of the fifth package of sanctions against Russia for the invasion of Ukraine. The sanctions are to cover oligarchs and the maritime sector. The restrictions also include a ban on Russian coal imports to the EU. At the moment, further decisions on the fifth package have been taken in Brussels, in which we actively participated in, and in which further clarifications were made, especially in the financial field. But it has also been agreed that coal imports will be rapidly reduced by terminating the relevant supply contracts in the transitional phase and replacing them with new contracts with countries other than Russia. This is another big and decisive step, which together with the other steps taken so far, will help to make it clear that Russia and the Russian president are not only destroying Ukraine with the war are being waged there, but are also destroying the future of their own country. German Chancellor is delaying the decision to hand over modern armored vehicles to Ukraine. In turn, Brussels NATO foreign ministers decided to give Ukraine more financial and material support. Ukrainian Defense Minister Dmitry Kuleba took part in the meeting. The damage that is being inflicted on Russia by sanctions now has mid- and long-term implications for Russian economy. But people are dying today. The offensive is unfolding today, and we need steps which will uh, stop Russia's war machine. Today. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is in Kiev tonight with a delegation that includes Foreign Service Head Joseph Borrell, Prime Minister Slovakia Edward Heger, and members of the European Parliament. It is the unthinkable has happened here. We have seen the cruel face of um, Putin's army. We have seen the recklessness and the cold heartedness with which they have been Sorry. occupying the city. Um, here in Butra, we saw our humanity being shattered. And it is, the whole world is mourning. And finally, presidential elections will be held next Sunday in France. This year, the French will choose the head of state from among 12 candidates. Among them was Emmanuel Macron, who fought for re-election. According to recent polls, Macron's advantage is diminishing, as the leader of the far right, Marine Le Pen, is chasing him in the race for the presidency. For the first time in history, the French president spat not with his challengers, but with Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. In a Friday morning interview for the Le Parisien Daily, the French president accused the Polish Prime Minister of being an extreme right-wing anti-Semite who excludes LGBTQ people, adding that Morawiecki wanted to help Marine Le Pen, a far-right candidate, running in the French presidential election. Macron's fury was caused by earlier remarks by the Polish prime minister, who had addressed Macron directly with references to his numerous talks with Russia's President Vladimir Putin, aimed to end Russia's aggression on Ukraine. President Macron, how many times have you negotiated with Putin? What have you achieved? Have you stopped any of the actions that have taken place? Morawiecki also said that one does not negotiate with criminals. Criminals must be fought. Nobody negotiated with Hitler. Would you negotiate with Hitler? Would you negotiate with Stalin? Would you negotiate with Pol Pot? Morawiecki asked rhetorically. Poland's foreign minister summoned the French ambassador to explain the statements made in the interview of the president of the French Republic for Le Parisien. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Polish Daily Weather, Polish Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a great night. Thank you.